Hello, Lip Sync Assassins, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be doing a bit of a ranking video here today. I was racking my brain, trying to think of fun little video topics, and I thought, you know, a lot of times when people are ranking Drag Race Lip Syncs, they're ranking them as a whole. They're ranking them as a collective between whoever's participating in them. But I thought it would be fun to do a ranking of individual Drag Race lip sync performances. So the criteria for whether a lip sync can be included in this video is it has to be a regular season lip sync for your life or a lip sync for the crown. We are only going to be covering lip syncs from the flagship U.S. seasons of Drag Race, seasons 1 through 15 of U.S. Drag Race here, mainly because going over every season and trying to think of my favorite individual performances would be so much in one little sitting that it just, it wouldn't feel right, you know? I feel like a lot of these lip syncs need their praise that I want to give them, so I would like to have the opportunity to give them that, and hopefully if you all enjoy this, we'll do, you know, an All-Stars version, uh, like a UK version, you know. We'll, we'll go through the franchises and we'll talk about it. Uh, so I settled on 15 lip syncs, well actually technically 20 to include in this. There are 5 honorable mentions, the other 15 I'm actually going to like spend time talking about. I went through a very scientific method to get to what did this list ended up being. Um, I essentially spent like an hour going through um, the US Drag Race lip syncs, and I picked 3 from each season that were my 3 favorite individual performances. Uh, resulting in 45, because that's how numbers work. <laughs> and um, then I cut that list down to 20 and decided that I didn't want to cut any more and I wanted to talk about all 20 of them. So <laughs> that's basically the way that it worked out. And then I ranked them. Uh, the honorable mentions are not ranked. They're just going to be in chronological order from when they happened. Uh, but yeah, the things that I look for in a lip sync mainly are like characterization, like I want to feel like you are saying the words to the song, you know? Like providing the vibe is more important to me than doing something flashy for the sake of like doing something flashy, you know? And also I think for what these lip syncs are, since they're all so amazing, I'm gonna be nitpicking very minor details about them that really don't matter. And I want to clarify that I adore all these lip syncs. They're my they're my top 20 in in US Drag Race. I love all of them. But I'm going to have to be critiquing little shit and being like, you know, why did she walk to the back of the stage back there? That's like five seconds of wasted time. I'm going to have to say that about one of these lip syncs later. I already know which one I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of it. So like there's going to be a lot to go through. So let us start with our honorable mentions. Starting off our honorable mentions, we have the oldest lip sync present on this list, and actually the second oldest lip sync in Drag Race history. This being Akasha's performance to We Break the Dawn by Michelle Williams. Now, this lip sync is stellar. She fits the vibe. She says all these lyrics. She does it so passionately. I mean, Michelle Williams cries. She she starts bawling during the lip sync. That's how much Akasha's performance moved her, and it moved me too. She was doing amazing. Uh, this did not make the top 15 for me, mainly because a lot of these early seasons, the lip syncs are so short that we just don't have the time to like actually get into it, you know? If we got to see the fully unedited version of this lip sync, and for frankly, for all of the lip syncs I feel like present in the honorable mentions category, there's a very decent chance that they would be moved into the top 15. But I mean, purely for the fact that Michelle Williams, the artist who sang the song that's being performed, starts crying during it, it was, it was a lock for me, for sure, in those top 20. Next, we have Adore Delano's performance to Vibology. She really hits so many beats in this. You know, she does like this like butt slam to the ground. She does all of these different moves that really fit the vibe. Ology. Uh huh. <laughs> That's the stupidest fucking joke I've ever made. I'm keeping it in. <laughs> um, of this lip sync. She does so good in this. The main reasons that this lip sync is not in the top 15 is that 
when I think of all these lip syncs, Vibology is just one of the ones I think of less. Like, I just, it, it crosses my mind it, less than all the other ones above it, really. And also, she does have a slight hair malfunction at the end. Again, I told you, we are nitpicking the most minute bullshit details out of these. And I, you know, a wardrobe malfunction, none of these other ones have a wardrobe malfunction in them. None of them do. And even though it's the tiniest wardrobe malfunction in any sense, really, this one has one. So I kind of have to put it in this section. Next up in our honorable mentions, we actually have a double header here. Uh, we have both Evie Oddly's and Brooklyn Heights' lip syncs to Sorry Not Sorry. Um, this lip sync is obviously amazing. It is regarded as one of the best lip syncs of all time collectively. And if this was a list of, you know, as an overall lip sync, you know, kind of situation, which one is the best? This one would be near the top for sure. It'd be top five, I can guarantee. And a place, you know, from five to one, can't guarantee. Top five, I would say for sure. But the main reason that I did not put either of them in here is one, I really didn't know how to distinguish them. They both really are such similar quality performances to me. If I had to choose one person who I think just did a teensy eensy little baby bit better, I would say Brooklyn did better. But I did not know how to fairly rank them in the top 15. And I also think the top 15 all have more characterization to them. Like, I love a good, I love a good fucking, you know, lip sync with a bunch of dips and splits and tricks. I mean, that's literally what this is, and it's in my top 20, both of them. But, like, the characterization of the song, I thought, was better found in all the lip syncs above it. So, because of my inability to feel like I could fairly separate these two performances, and going off of one of the criteria that I think is really important for me in terms of determining what I want to see in a lip sync. I did not know how to put them on the top 15, so I didn't. Last but not least in our honorable mentions, we have Georges's performance to My Head and My Heart. This lip sync is great. It is absolutely, it, I mean, she literally hits every beat. She wastes no time with her moves, and that is really important to me. She she doesn't waste a single second doing something that isn't in character for the song. I just wish she served more face. That's the main reason why she's not here. Like, and th this is a bad picture to represent that because she is giving face in this one second, but she's also not singing anything in the second. This is taken from like the first like five seconds of the fucking lip sync where they're just like dan like dancing around at the very beginning. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where I took it from. I should know that I did this like half an hour ago, but whatever. Um, but I wish that her mouth connected more with the lyrics. I wish it felt more like she was the one saying them because with lip sync we got while she you know served it with the fucking dance and gave that vibe i didn't get enough from you know the actual words so that's why i did not put her in my personal top 15. okay now time to get to the actual rankings but before we do that please like comment and subscribe if you wish on this video uh, only about 25% of my viewers are actually subscribed, so hit that subscribe button if you like the videos. I like the videos, and if you made it this far, you obviously don't hate it, so, you know, goals! Subscribe, why not? It'll be fun, you know? We can make that little connection, ooh! <laughs> but anyways, let us get into my lip sync that I have at 15th place. This would be Morgan McMichael's lip sync to Two of Hearts. Now, this lip sync, I mean, it is so tight. Every move is done with purpose and is done so beautifully. I mean, she fits the vibe amazing. She has all these different things that she does to convey that vibe. She really, really serves it with her dance. But we have the same issue with this lip sync that I had with Georgia's, which is I wish she served more face. I just didn't get enough face. I didn't get enough connection to the lyrics with her mouth. And uh, that in this ranking does put her at the technical, I guess, last spot of this ranking. But, you know, again, it's literally the 15th individual performance for me out of 
hundreds so like it's still fucking amazing she really kills this so hard and also i guess she also technically does have a wardrobe malfunction her hat falls off just a little bit at the end which i guess is similar to a door situation so i, I accidentally lied earlier but she's also last in the ones that are actually numbered so you know i i don't care <laughs> Our next lip sync is going to come from season 13 of Drag Race. And it is the only one actually from season 13. I would assume there would have been more, but we actually have a season that we're going to be getting to later that is three representatives, which I don't think y'all will expect. Leave it in the comments down below what season you think will be represented three times in this top 15. But the lip sync we have here in 14th place is... Denali's performance to 100% pure love. She bodied this. She, in a very similar vein to Morgan, did not waste a single second of this lip sync doing anything that wasn't fucking good. Like, literally every move worked and made sense and fit the vibe and was great with it. My one kind of critique with it is, even though I just said her moves were great, and I, they, were, they were entertaining. They were very entertaining to watch. We do get some kind of, you know, no gang movements in there that are like, 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 while it's entertaining to watch, absolutely, it's just not technically there, and it kind of throws me out the vibe just a little bit, and also, while this is less of an issue with Denali, I think she does a better job than Georges and Morgan McMichaels, as I've previously listed. I wish we got a slightly more connection to the lyrics in the mouth. I do think she did better. I think she actually did a pretty damn good job with it overall, but I feel like it, I feel like there could have been more. I feel it. I know she can. I just I we didn't get it personally for me. So the kind of questionable, um, you know, performance I guess of the dance moves slightly, and me wanting a bit more from you know her mouth i'm gonna be saying shit like that this whole fucking episode it's gonna be just like i wanted more mouth <laughs> god okay i'm gonna be quoted okay that's fine i guess um those reasons is why she's 14th but she did a great job obviously <laughs> our lip syncer in 13th place is one of the most admired lip sync assassins on repulse drag race as a whole i would say and i love this performance and if I had to choose any of hers to be on here, out of the, I guess, three that were available from her season, this is the one I had to choose, absolutely. And that is Coco Montrese's performance to Cold Hearted by Paula Abdul. I mean, you got the finger pointing to the mouth, you can see it there. That is an iconic moment in lip sync history. And she does it so well and has such good execution and her outfit works I, i'm gonna be repeating jinx's fucking like confessional her outfit works beautifully with the song the fucking sleeves just flowing in the air is so perfect again i feel like this is a similar situation to the last ones i mentioned and to really to all of the ones we'll actually get to a couple where this is a slight issue later on for me but i don't feel like she wastes any time I don't feel like she wastes time with anything that she does. Everything has purpose. Everything looks good. Everything makes sense. But I wish that she kind of chose different things to waste a bit more time on. There were some moments where it's like, okay, I saw you do the arm swish a couple of times. I like the arm swish, absolutely. But I would have liked to have seen a different move the second time. You know what I mean? I wish there was a bit more variety. And also, this one is also kind of cursed due to the fact that this was an earlier season of Drag Race, we're getting less footage of Coco's lip sync here. So there's less to judge in terms of her lip sync. She could have done absolutely more that I just do not know about because the footage is not out there <laughs> to be seen. Due to all those facts, she's here at 13th place. Coco is amazing. We need her on another All Stars. I mean, she's fucking perfect. In 12th place, we have a lip sync that really is feast and famine in terms of uh, what happened within it. Obviously, we'll be talking about the feast. And this lip sync was done by Latrice Royale to Natural Woman. This, I mean, she kills it. Every single thing, again, done with purpose, really so beautiful. She tells a storyline without fucking moving. And that's amazing, and I admire her for that. I fucking love it. 
that is also partially my critique though in terms of why this isn't higher is that i'm i'm all for a good park and bark i mean this is i mean it's my number 12 of all time and it's a park and bark but personally i prefer a bark and walk around a little bit you know what i mean like i that's i just prefer that i personally i would even if it's not movement even if it's just a spin i want to see the spin you know I do admire the choice to do the park and bark here because this is drag race and I think there's definitely a lot of pressure to kind of like go big or go home but she went you know kind of un I, I wouldn't say understated either because she, she, she went perfectly stated actually she kind of did exactly what you needed to do she gave the emotion she gave the vulnerability she did a great job with it i also do have a slight critique in that she does spend a lot of time looking down and with her eyes closed and obviously that's part of the storyline, that's part of the appeal of it. She's doing like a pregnant mother to like unborn child kind of situation here in order to give the vibe of the song, you make me feel like a natural woman, it's amazing. But when she keeps looking down at the belly, it's like, yes, I agree with that move, but I want to see your eyes more. I didn't actually calculate this, I might put it on the screen here if I remember to. I didn't actually calculate this, I might go back and calculate it, not sure if I will or not, but I'm pretty sure for over half of the lip sync her eyes are closed. And it's like, we're doing a lip sync for your life, I want to see your eyes, you know? Like obviously, like it makes sense with the character and she should have her eyes closed for some part of it, but I felt like it was too much. And again, it's the nitpicky shit, I have to say this every time, I, cause like it is truly it's it's a it, honestly this is a weird video concept i'm realizing as i'm doing it because i'm singing the praises of these lip syncs as some of my favorites of all time but also i'm having to critique them as to show why they are lower than the ones above them so it's kind of a fucked situation regardless you know what i mean but that's literally the reasoning is that i wish her eyes were open more and i wish she moved around a little bit that's literally it this next lip sync here actually has the exact same reasoning for why it is placed where it is uh, in the order, uh, being that I wish we had more face-to-face, -face, you know, eye contact time with the performer. But I just preferred this lip sync, just a smidge over Natural Woman. And that is Widow Von Du's lip sync to This Is My Night. Now, full disclosure, because obviously this is a very biased, subjective list, This Is My Night is one of my, like, top 20 I guess if we're going to be using the top 20 for this video, technically, uh, favorite songs of all time. It is a song that is on repeat for me a lot. And so the fact that this happened on Drag Race was really great for me. I fucking loved it. Um, and the fact that Widow did so good, obviously, for me, really shoots it up into the rankings a good amount. Um, but I really feel like she hits the vibe of this song every single fucking beat. This is the first one where I feel like the vibe is hit perfectly she hits the vibe the moves are good there are some moments where it's like okay i wish you did slightly more with your moves kind of the antithesis of the ones like morgan mcmichaels like i said earlier um is that what the word antithesis means i think so but whatever it is the opposite to say you know i guess better simpler words um of the reasons of why uh, morgan mcmichaels is where it is but catching the vibe matters more to me than catching the moves personally just as a general consensus i would rather see you fit the vibe so hard but not go 100 percent on the moves than see you go 100 percent on the moves but not hit the vibe perfectly enough you know what i mean Again, my slight issue is that because of Widow's dress, which I think was slightly too long to be lip syncing in in the way that she was attempting to, she does have to pull it up a bit, which I wouldn't say is a wardrobe malfunction because that isn't a, like a malfunction. The dress is acting the way it's supposed to. It's just that due to the fact of doing a lip sync, it isn't the best situation for her. I wouldn't, I wouldn't count that as a wardrobe malfunction personally. Um, and also, because of this, she does look down a little bit uh, during the lip sync at different parts um, to, you know, make sure that she isn't, like, tripping over her dress, which is completely understandable. But when you're nitpicking shit, I wish you would have just risked tripping and stared at me more personally. So that's why she's here at number 11. It is now time to get to our top 10.
Our first member of the top 10 is one of the most renowned lip sync performances, I would say, in the modern era of Drag Race. That being Anitra's performance to Boss Bitch. I mean, this was amazing. The fucking diving over Marsha, Marsha, Marsha moment was just stellar. It truly was amazing. And that moment makes a lot of this lip sync for me. And she fits the vibe, I say. It doesn't 100% look like she could be singing these lyrics, but I do feel like the way that she presents her mouth and her face do fit the vibe of the song very well. My issue of why it's not higher, personally, is that there is a decent amount of time spent, like, walking to the back of the stage. And it's like, I understand doing that, like, you know, once to do, like, a dramatic thing, but she does it a couple of times. And personally, you just really don't need to, like, do it. It doesn't really add anything to me, besides the fact that you're going to be walking up and doing something cool afterwards. So you're essentially, like, spending time not doing anything to then do something later. And if, and if it's nothing more than I'm going to walk sexily towards the front of the stage, then like, kind of like, it's kind of like, what's the point for me? You know, like, I, like if, if you do it perfectly, then I guess like I, I, I'm in favor of it, but like, it just feels partially, even though you can't walk sexily to the front of the stage, if you don't walk back, that walking back time feels like, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm waiting for you to turn around. It's kind of, kind of is what the feeling is for me personally. So that is why Anitra is here at number 10, but this performance is obviously fucking amazing. Our number nine lip sync is ranked here for the same reasons as Anitra's. I just prefer it a bit more, similar situation to the Widow Von Du and Latrice Royale lip syncs, but this lip sync is going to be coming from Drag Race Season 6, and that is going to be Trinity K. Bonet's performance to I'm Every Woman. Trinity, whenever she is looking at the audience, you feel like she's saying the words. This moment right here in the lip sync, where she's doing this, has given me chills before. Like, it is so amazing. Every single time that she does a move, it makes sense. And every time you see her lips, it looks perfect. But we have the same issue again for me of too much time facing away. Mainly spent walking to the back of the stage to then walk to the front of the stage. I just wish that there was none of that. If, if honestly, if she had just done more shit like this during the lip sync, this one would be, this could be top three. Easy peasy for me. I love it. But for the same reasons as Anitra's, I had to put it here. But I mean, this is fucking iconic. Our lip sync in eighth place comes from Drag Race season 10. And due to the fact that I said that, you probably already know where this is going. It's Monet Exchange's performance to pound the alarm. Now, she fits the vibe. She has these different moves that she does. I mean, the fake kind of like jump split is so good. Um, the actual jump split, very good. Like, she really fits the vibe and she has solid, 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 I I'm saying it three times because I feel, I felt it three times, <laughs> moves in this performance. I just wish that we had slightly more of them. This is a hard song to do, for sure, because there are the rap sections and then there are the kind of chorus sections that aren't that are rap. And all of her kind of big moments happen in the chorus sections. I wish we got to see a few more creative moves in the verses. And that's really kind of the main reason why she's here is that I wish that a bit more was done. Kind of filling in the downtime between these bigger actions that she does take within the lip sync. But I mean, this is one of the lip syncs that changed Drag Race history. There have been many times afterwards where somebody has tried to do kind of a funny little gag moment in the same way or similar to the fake jump split, and none of them have been as good as Monet is here. So she had to be here in this top 15, and I decided to place her here at number eight. Here at number seven, we have somebody that everybody expected to be on this list somewhere, I would say. Um, really, you know, along with Anitra being one of the dominant lip sync assassins of the season. And here at number seven, I decided to put 
Sasha Colby's performance to I'm in love with a monster. This is just a true and pure example of why Sasha Colby is so renowned and so loved. I mean, everything feels intentional. Every move is so good. The hair flips, wonderful. Everything feels like it happens for a reason, and she hits the words perfectly. I guess the reason why this isn't higher is that I kind of wish, like, again, as I just mentioned, love the hair flips, but we get a cup, we get them a couple of times in a similar situation to Coco's arm, you know, spins, where it's like, okay, I wish this one hair flip was something else, personally. Like, I like it, but I kind of wish something different happened in that one spot. And that's really the only critique I have. But, uh, we're up to the final seven here. These critiques are literally going to be one-off things. Like, I wish this five seconds was different. This is where this gets to this point where it's like, I wish that five seconds of the slip sync was spent doing something else. And obviously, I'm nobody to be critiquing Sasha Colby's fucking performance or any of these drag queens' performances. I could not do half as good to these lip sync songs as they did to them, you know? Like, I would not be able to fucking hold a candle to any of these performances in any means, and I know that fully. This is just content for YouTube. This is just to make a fun video for us Drag Race stands to talk about our favorite performances, what we love, what we cherish, what we hold dear. That's literally all this is about. I'm not coming for any of these people. I don't, I don't, I, I really, I don't know why I feel like I need to stress that so hard in this video, but like, I love all these performances. I'm just nitpicking for the sake of having to show why they're ranked the way they are. Our sixth place performance is one from a season that is not known for its lip sync prowess, but this lip sync is really one for the ages for me. And that is Peppermint's performance to Macho Man. Peppermint does so many fun, different tricks and moves in here, getting on the ground, fucking point to Alexis Michelle saying she's a Macho Man. All of these little things, the wig reveal in this lip sync, which is a great wig reveal that nobody talks about. It is, it is a great lip sync that is, I think, pretty underrated. Not pretty underrated. P I, people talk about it a decent amount, but I would say I would say decently underrated in terms of the Drag Race zeitgeist. She has all these different little moves that have intention, that have drive, that feel good. And it can, and it almost feels like she's the one, like, singing the song. Like, she serves this so fucking hard. There are just a couple of moments where I wish she did something different. Kind of, I guess actually this is more of a mix of Monet's and Sasha's critiques. This lip sync is similar to Sasha Colby's for me in the fact that really my only nitpick is that there's like five seconds of this lip sync that I wish was something different. The only critique in any way that I have of this is that the part where they say he has a funky walk and Peppermint does this move of doing the funky walk. The judges laugh at it I don't like it. I just don't like it. It doesn't, it, it doesn't feel, it kind of feels, unlike everything else in this lip sync, it feels impromptu and it doesn't execute the way that I wish it would. I wish the walk was funkier. I do. It just doesn't, because she, the way she does it, it feel like Tatiana being like, oh, that's a choice. And I just didn't like that choice personally. But again, it's like five seconds of a lip sync where everything else is a 10 out of 10. So she's here in the top six for me because I fucking love this song. I love this lip sync. I love Peppermint. She does an amazing job. Now we are here at our top five. These to me are the creme de la creme, the Ben de la creme, you might say. She's not on this list, but you know, these are the cream of the crop. And joining us from season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race is Chi Chi Devane, rest in peace and her performance too, and I'm telling you, I'm not going. This is an amazing performance from Chi Chi. Every moment that we get to see is stellar from her. Every choice that she makes is a great choice in this lip sync. There's nothing to critique there. She honestly gets screwed from being higher up for me because of the decisions of other people. 
there is a moment kind of in the middle toward, middle end ish of the lip sync where Thorgy does something. I forget exactly what it was, and it kind of distracts Chi Chi for a second, and you can see it. And it kind of takes you out of the spell for just the teensiest inth of a second. But that's not Chi Chi's fault. That's not Chi Chi's fault at all. That something happened that she didn't do, that she looked at momentarily. But when we're, you know, literally picking hairs here, that is something that I have to know. And that feels important to me here once we're at this, you know, caliber. And also, she got fucked by the length of the lip sync. It's like a minute and a half. We don't get to see much of Chi Chi here. Most of the other lip syncs in this top 20 have more footage of the people that I chose. If we got to see the full cut of this lip sync, Chi Chi could very easily be number one. Truly, she could very easily be at the top of the chart, but we didn't. So that's why she's here at number five. Chi Chi is amazing. This lip sync performance is stellar. This field up here is so close and is so amazing. Now, number four might be a bit of a shock. Not a shock, because people love this lip sync. Like, this is a lip sync that people regard as being great. But I think I love it way more than most do. And we are joined by a lady who is ready to get down to business. And that is Milan's performance to Vogue from Drag Race Season 4. Milan, I mean, everything is pointed and executed perfectly. When I say that everything has the exact amount of effort and purpose put into it, it does. It all feels amazing from Milan. It just, it gives me life seeing this. This is one of the couple lip syncs on here. I would honestly say this is probably the second highest lip sync for me in terms of how much I purposefully go back to rewatch the performance. This and one of the other ones that we're going to be getting to in the top three. I go back and watch Milan do this all the time. She is, first of all, dressed up in this, you know, for season four of Drag Race, decently mask, you know, drag. And she kills this performance to Vogue. She does all these different moves, all varying levels of intensity and, you know, just like different kinds. I mean, she literally just sits here still for a minute and it's just mesmerizing. And then she swims on the ground. She does this fucking back bend. I mean, she does so much here. And I am captivated by this performance. I really can't nitpick it that much. My only nitpick is that in a similar vein to ones earlier where I feel, you know, taken out of the fantasy for a second, or I wish they did a different move for a second. I do think, even though I love this, what we see here of her being upside down and saying the words, I wish this was cut shorter. I wish this was cut just a little bit, a few, a handful of seconds shaved off of this would have been great. I don't even care what she does during the shaved off seconds. She could just walk around and I'd be fine with it. But uh, that's, that's all. That's literally it for me. I mean, I love this. I, I, I can, I can say it 20 times if you want. I love it. I love it. I love it. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, anyway, let us move on to our top three. In third place here, I arguably have the most famous lip sync performance in Drag Race history. This being Sasha Velour's performance of So Emotional. Now, I do feel like Sasha here gets a slight uh, advantage uh, in the fact that she has had more time to prepare for this lip sync performance than the others had to prepare for theirs, you know? Some of them did not know they were gonna be lip syncing into the song. Uh, until very shortly before it happened. You know, Sasha Colby, I'm in love with the monster. Like, she knew that she might have to lip sync to it, but, you know, she only knew that she was actually going to be lip syncing to it right before it happened. You know, she, you know, Sasha Velour here had a moment to kind of create this storyline, but oh my god, if this isn't the most iconic way reveal in Drag Race, personally for me, I would say Roxy Andrews is second. 
the most iconic moment in any finale of Drag Race, and one of the most clean-cut performances we've ever seen in a lip sync. Everything has purpose, everything has drive. She gives these big emotions that don't 100% fit with, you know, they don't feel like they're coming out of Sasha's mouth, but you see the perspective of Sasha here and the character that she's kind of presenting here and the way that the words are coming out of their mouth is entirely consistent throughout this. She gives this intensity and she serves the intensity the whole time. And it is a magical feat to see. I am in love with this performance. A lot of people are. And while I did just praise her consistency to the emotion that she gives to this song, the fact that it is not exactly the emotion that the song is, very, very similar, but not exact, the fact that it's not that is why it is below the two that I have as my top two. The top two songs I have are two songs where the lip syncer really fits the vibe the whole time, carries the mood, does intentional calculated moves that really fit with the song, and there's no downtime with their performances for me. And because Sasha is just barely missing out on one of those criteria, she has to be here at third place. As I just mentioned, these two lip syncs are pretty comparable for me in terms of the criteria. They really fit all these criteria so similarly that choosing between my favorite was really just looking at the specific moves that were being done and also looking at the potential disadvantages that they had to work with and seeing which one I think is more impressive. Now, our number two here is a lip sync that is definitely seen as good by a lot of people, but it is the lip sync performance that I go back and watch the most out of any lip sync performance in Drag Race. This would be Willow Pill's performance to Never Too Much by Luther Vandross. Willow kills this performance from the moment the song starts. At the very first beat, she shakes her wig and she fits into the groove. And from that point on, she's locked in and you're locked in with her. It looks like the words could come from Willow's mouth. Everything is calculated. Everything is done to perfection with every detail being amazing. And with this song, a song that is decently serious, you really do want to fit the vibe and that she does fit the vibe 98% of the time. The 2% of the time where she doesn't fit the vibe, she's making a comedic choice that works, which is a risky ass move to make a five second long comedic choice in a song where you're playing it straight and perfect the whole time. But it fucking works. It works. It works so well. I... I think about this performance just, like, randomly. I love it so much. She fits it so perfectly. And I, again, like, I have nothing, I have nothing to critique. I have nothing. Number one, this is a lip sync that most people would have expected to be in this video at some point. I feel like most people would have expected it to be top five. For me, it is number one, and that's Dita Ritz's performance to Everlasting Love. I apologize for the quality of the screenshot, especially this one, considering it's my number one. I literally could not find anything better. I searched for 15 minutes. This is the best I got. I'm sorry. Um, but Dita exemplifies everything I just mentioned with Willow Pill. She kills every second of this lip sync. Every move fits the vibe perfectly. It sounds like she's singing the song. She does these things, and even the moments where she's not looking at the camera, it feels so real that even the moments where she's not looking at the camera, you can almost still believe that she's singing the song. She exemplifies everything that I want in a lip sync performance. And part of the reason that she gets the edge over Willow Pill for me is that she has a short amount of time to do this. This is season four of Drag Race. This is like a minute and a half at best lip sync, whereas the Never Too Much is 
I think a bit over two minutes. So she has less time than Willow and she serves it in the exact same way in style and groove and experience that I want as Willow does. But considering that she did it in less time and gave me the same amount of impact, I think it would be completely unfair to put Dita Ritz anywhere but first place here for this performance. It is truly magical. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want me to make similar videos to this in the future, please let me know by leaving a comment down below. A fun little rhyme there. Very nice. Uh, again, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you wish. Leave your thoughts, feelings, and opinions down below. As always, I will leave my Twitter link down below if you want to go follow me on there. I post banger sometimes. I am hungry and it is very late. Thanks again for watching, and as always, take care. Bye-bye.